Hey, today we're going to look at calculating the volume of a cylinder and I have the perfect place for us to go to do that. This is one of the mechanical rooms here at the school and there's a perfect cylinder we can use in there. So come on, let's go find it. This is all the boilers and everything to help heat the school. All kinds of duct work and everything. Back through here. Controls for exhaust fans and everything that help keep the school working. But this is what I'm looking at is these four big hot water tanks here. So, uh, so four, four hot water tanks here. We're going to calculate the volume of one of them. This is a hot water tank. This would be something you probably have in your house too, heat your water. This is a lot bigger than the one in your house, but the principle is the same and works the same way. It's a cylinder. If we're going to calculate the volume of a cylinder, we're going to do it the same way we did for a prism. If we know the area of the base, the base is a circle, know the area of the base and the height, we can work out the volume. So I'm going to measure it now. First we're going to measure the, we need to know, to find the area of that base, the circle, we need to know the radius or the diameter of the thing. Now, I can't really access the bottom, it's on the floor, and it's hard to access the top here because there's this pipe. So what I'm going to do instead is, there's a bracket right up against here, and the same right up against here. So I can measure just directly between those brackets, and that's going to tell me the diameter. So if I slide that tape measure through there, I can see that I've got 28 inches. We're going to do it in inches, 28 inches. And then we're going to sneak over here, and we're going to look at the height of the thing. And we've got 58 inches, okay? 28 inch diameter, 58 inch height. So we're gonna look right now and calculate that volume and then come back and talk a little bit more about hot water tanks. All right, so uh, we need to figure out the volume of this thing here. Let's look at the two measurements we made. We measured the height of the thing, the top all the way down to the bottom, the distance between the two circular bases, and we measured the diameter of one of those circles kind of indirectly by measuring it between those two, uh, those two brackets, right? This piece of metal here and the other one on the other side. So on our, uh, we've got a kind of a stylized picture of a cylinder over here so you can see it better. We measured the diameter which we're going to draw right here there's the diameter sort of almost did it right and the height all right and the way we're going to calculate this is we figure out the area of the base one of those circles doesn't matter whether it's the top or the bottom because it's all the same all the way down all the way across and multiply that by the height of the thing then we have the volume so let's do that right now down below here Let's make some space here. What we had is we have the diameter was 28 inches. And we had the height, which we'll call H, was 58 inches. Our volume is going to be equal to area of base, the circle, times the height. Or if you want it as more of a formula with the variables, that's going to be equal to area of a circle is pi r squared times h, we're using for height. Now we don't have the radius, but we do have the diameter. And of course the radius is the diameter divided by 2, so 28 inches divided by 2, or in other words, 14 inches. Right? So we have 14 inch radius, 58 inch height. So those are the numbers we're going to substitute into our formula that we've set up, our equation that we've set up down below here. Make even more space. So we're going to replace this R with 14 inches. I'm going to include the units when I do these calculations. And you'll see why in a second. We're going to replace the H with 58 inches. And then the rest of it, we're going to just keep the same. Pi times 14 inches squared times 58 inches. That's our volume. 
as we work this out here, I'm going to multiply all the, the numbers first and deal with a pi afterwards. So we'll get our calculator to do that. So we've got 14 squared. If you don't happen to know, it is 196. And then we need to multiply that by pi to get that area of the base. Now, you could just use 3.14 as a really rough approximation but while you're using this calculator scientific calculator you might as well use the pi button now it's hard to see but the value of pi you can get by this button here as long as you use the second function key first pi times 196 okay that's going to give me that all right that's going to be more more exact than if you uh if you just use 3.14 the value of pi on here it stores it to a lot of decimal places all right so let's put that down on our, we have 615.75. Uh, I'm gonna put dot dot dot. Now again, that's uh, this is inches squared. We multiplied inches by inches here, so maybe I won't put dot dot dot. We're just gonna put roughly equal to inches squared here. So we have that. That's the area of that base, the area of that circle, and then we're gonna multiply it by this height here still. All right. So we go back to the calculator. Multiply that times 58. Then we have 35,713 as our approximate volume, cubic inches. 35,713 cubic inches. Now I'm I'm not putting any decimal places here, and I probably uh, should even round it off more because I did some pretty uh, rough approximations on those uh, measurements. But nonetheless, we'll leave it like this for now. Now, this is cubic inches because we had an area, square inches, and we multiplied that by another inches here. We got inches times inches times inches again. So cube, that's where that cubic inches come from. It's a volume. Now, that's a lot of cubic inches. Now, normally things like hot water tanks and large items like that, you're not going to record or report the volume in cubic inches. I just did that for the convenience of uh, measurement. But... If we want to put this into a unit that you use more, if you happen to know, and I happen to know here, that uh, one U.S. gallon is equal to 231 cubic inches, we're going to use that fact to change it into gallons because that's usually how, when you talk about hot water tanks, what they should be. So, actually, you don't need to do that. I'm just going to say this is roughly equal to 35,713. If we divide that by 231, then our answer is in gallons. So go back to the calculator here. So we have that number. I'll just use it with the decimals because we're going to round it off anyways. Divide by 231. About 154, 155. Let's say, oops, 154.6 roughly gallons. Now, all our measurements were, were so rough. I'm just going to say this is about 150 gallons we got for our answer. Now we're going to go back and look at uh, the hot water tank again and talk about how reasonable that answer is. Okay, so we figured out that the volume of this thing is about 150 gallons. Now, you can actually look up the volume on here. It says the capacity down here on this uh, label. It says that the capacity of this thing is 99 gallons. Now why would that number be so different than the answer that we got? Well, I'll tell you how this thing uh, this thing works. You have two pipes going to this thing. One down to the bottom here, where cold water goes in. And you got one up at the top where hot water comes out. At the bottom, you also have a gas pipe down here that comes in. It goes in, flame under there, heats the water. Hot water rises, cold water in here heats up, hot water rises comes out the pipe at the top. Now, you need some space here. We measured right down to the bottom, but there's some space in here that isn't water. That's the space where the flame is burning. So that's why it would, one reason why it would be less. The other reason why this is going to be less is you're heating up the water, but you want to keep it hot and you want it to be insulated. So the walls are actually quite thick. We measured the outside diameter and the full height but there's actually going to be quite a bit of thickness, so the space inside is going to be a smaller cylinder, which is 99 gallons is what they say. All right? But the principle is the same. You know the height, you know the diameter of the radius, you can work out the volume. That's how you do it.